Welcome to yet another video on Power Automate Desktop. In this video, we shall see how to create a flow to extract text from multiple images in a folder into a single text file. Let's say you've taken photos of a few pages of a textbook using your mobile phone or created screenshots of an ebook or the content of a web page and saved them as JPG or PNG files. You can extract text from those images and write them into a single text file by creating a flow in Power Automate Desktop. Let's see how we can create such a flow using Power Automate Desktop. These are the four images of a book that I've captured in a folder AWL. We are going to create a flow using Power Automate Desktop to extract all the text from these four images and paste them into a single text file. I'm going to copy the path of this folder by right clicking on the folder name. You can see an option copy as path. Let's click on this. Now let's go to Power Automate Desktop. Power Automate Desktop is pre-installed in Windows 11. If you are using earlier versions of Windows, please watch my first video in the Power Automate playlist, wherein I have shown how to install Power Automate in your computer. This is the landing page of Power Automate Desktop. You can click on the tab My Flows. Here you can see all the flows that you've created so far. For creating a new flow, click on this button, New Flow. We have to give the flow a name. Let's name it as Extract Text from Multiple Images. Let's click on Create. A new screen opens up in this window. On the left pane, you can see the actions that we are going to use to create a flow. In the middle pane, we shall drag the actions from the left pane and create a flow as well as run the flow. Any variables that are created by the various actions that constitute the flow will be displayed under flow variables. If you create input or output variables, that would be displayed here. You may recall that we have copied the path of the folder. If we want to create a variable for that, you can click on the plus sign here. Click on input and we can save the path as a variable. So let's name the variable as file path. The data type would be text. In the default value box, let's paste the folder path that we've copied and let's delete the double quotes. The external name, we can give the same name as the variable name. So let's type file path. And if you want to give a description, you can say this is the input file path. You can make it case sensitive by turning this on. Let's click on save. Now, instead of typing file path every time, we can use the input variable. In order to get the text from the multiple images in the folder, we have to get all the files from that folder. We can do that using an action, get files from a folder. So in the search box under actions, let's type get files. This action helps us retrieve the list of files in a folder. So let's drag this and drop it here. We have to give the folder path. You may recall that we've already copied the folder path in this variable file path. We can access this variable by clicking on this icon, which is select variable. Let's click on this. File path is the variable that we want to access. So let's select this and click on select. Any variable name will be prefixed and suffixed with a percentage symbol. The file filter, choose a filter to limit the files retrieved. This allows a wildcard, for example, asterisk.txt or doc. To allow multiple file filters, separate the choices with a semicolon. So if you want to access multiple files, you can say asterisk.txt, semicolon, asterisk.exe, etc. In my case, all the files are of the type PNG. So after asterisk, type dot PNG. And if you don't want to mention anything, you can leave it as blank. Let's expand advanced. If you want to sort the files in any order, you can sort them. The variable produced by this action is called files. The retrieved files as a list of file objects will be stored in this variable files. Let's click on save. 
and we have the action here. The next step is to extract text from each file in the folder using the OCR optical character recognition option. In order to extract text from each file in the folder, we have to read each file. And for doing that, we are going to create a loop. Let's type loop in the search window. We can see the various loop actions. I'm going to use for each. For each iterates over items in a list, data table or data row, allowing a block of actions to be executed repeatedly. The variable files contains a list of files in the folder AWL. We are going to extract text from each file. Therefore, we drag for each into this pane. Now we have to specify the value to iterate. The value to iterate is the variable files because within the variable files we have a list of files and we want to iterate through each file in the list of files. To access this variable, let's click on this icon, select variable. Under the flow variables, we have files. Let's click on this and click on select. Each file that is read will be stored in current item. We can rename this as file. Click on save. For each file and files, we have to mention the actions that are to be performed. There are two actions that we are going to perform. One is to extract text from each file using OCR or optical character recognition, and then write the extracted text into a text file. Let's type OCR in the search window. Under the OCR group of actions here, you can see an action extract text with OCR. This extracts text from a given source using the specified OCR engine. So let's drag it and drop it within the for each loop. We need to provide various parameters. The first parameter is the OCR engine type. We have Windows OCR engine and Tesseract OCR engine. Tesseract OCR engine is from Google. Windows OCR engine supports 25 languages, whereas Tesseract OCR engine supports five languages. This is going to be deprecated, so we no longer use it. I'm going to select Windows OCR engine the OCR source, the source of image to perform OCR operation on. Let's expand this dropdown. There are three options, screen, foreground window, and image on disk. Our images are stored in the disk. Let's click on image on disk. In the parameter image file path, we have to give the file path as well as the file name. You may recall that the path of the current file will be available in the variable file. So let's click on this icon, select variable, select file and click on select. The search mode would be the whole of specified source. And let's expand OCR engine settings. The OCR language is English. You can select 25 OCR languages if you are using the Windows OCR engine. Image width multiplier and the image height multiplier would increase the width and the height of the image. You can go up to a maximum of three. And if you select any number beyond three, you are likely to get incorrect outcomes. The text that is extracted from the current image would be stored in the variable OCR text. It's important that the value stored in this variable is written immediately into a file. Otherwise, when the second file is read, this variable will be overwritten. So let's click on save. The next step is to write the content of this variable into a text file. For that, let's type write in the search window. So we have the option write text to file. Let's drag this and drop it under this action. Here we have to give the file path of the file in which we are going to write the text that is extracted. So for that, let's click on the select variable and select the input variable file path, which contains the path to the folder. Click on select. 
we have to give the file name including the extension. Let's type backslash extracted text.txt. We can use the extensions rich text file that is RTF or the extension doc. However, in the case of RTF and doc files, the formatting may not be compatible. When we use the extension text, the extracted text from each word in the image would be stored as it is. Here we have to give the text to write. The text to write is available in this variable OCR text. So let's select this variable by clicking here. Scroll down under the flow variable, select OCR text. Click on select. We have a toggle switch for append new line. This inserts a blank line after the text captured from each image. We don't want a line to be inserted after the text from each image. We want it to be a continuous text. So I'm going to turn this toggle off. Now, if file exists, if the file extracted text.txt already exists, we need to append new data to the existing file. So let's expand this option. And instead of overwrite existing content, we are going to choose append content. Now what happens is after the first file is read, the text contained in OCR text will be written. And when the second file is read, the content in the OCR text will be appended at the end of the text extracted from the first file. The normal encoding type would be Unicode. So let's leave it at that. The most important thing that we have to remember while giving the file path is to include the extension. Now let's click on save. So we have created the entire flow. To execute this flow, let's click on the run button and you can see the flow running and the variables changing here. Let's go to the folder and see whether the file with the extracted text has been created. This is the file extracted text.txt which contains the text extracted from all these image files. Let's double click on this. Let's open the first image file and compare it with the extracted text. We find that the text has been extracted as it is, including the punctuation marks. This is a very beautiful tool, especially when you want to extract text from photographs or screenshots. However, it is important that the image has to be of great clarity if the text that is extracted needs to be accurate. You can save the flow by clicking on the save button and the saved flow would be available on the opening page of Power Automate. Here we can see the flow that we created just now. We can run the flow by clicking on the run button from here. You can edit this flow by clicking on the ellipsis and clicking on edit. Hope you found this video useful. If you like this video, please click on the like button and share it with your friends and colleagues. Our YouTube channel has a lot of useful content. Please subscribe to our channel and help us take the number of subscribers to the 1000 mark. While subscribing, please remember to click on the bell icon and to select the all option so that you shall get notified as soon as we upload new content in our YouTube channel. Please visit our website paddycosmos.com. Thank you very much for your continued patronage and support. See you again with yet another video. Have a great day.